window wipers. How about window putting a, wipers? How about putting a two speed in a. Guess uh, what? Guess what? What? There isn't such a thing as a good set of window wipers for a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. There is, some that are, there is some that are better than others. And I, the ones that I found that work the best, if you can score them, is a set of 1100 sedan wheel boxes. Oops. Where the Austin America, you can, sometimes the Austin Americas have them too, but they're brass gear that runs on the cable. Yeah. And they're a larger diameter, so you need to use the stroker out of the out of the wiper motor, pull that shaft off the plastic gear and put that on the one that you get with the Austin, or like the wiper motor that you get with the Austin America, and put that in there. I think that's probably about the best setup. So it has a bigger, bigger wheel and a stroker to compensate for it so that it actually somehow has a little better wiping power. Because all I can tell you is my 80, eight or 89, it's, it's, it's stuck on the damn window the other day and I had to stop, get out of the car, and because of the fact that when you put the key in it, the switch is right there and you always bump into the thing, uh, it got caught on the window. And it's all I mean, 89, uh, 69, uh, 59, don't make a damn bit of difference. They don't have such a thing as a good set of wipers on them. <laughs> There is some maintenance. <coughs> the, 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 the actual wheel box shafts that come up to the wipers, they never get lubed. Yeah. And they have some bushings in there. And they, they probably don't move as good as they could if they had some lubrication once a year or something like that, which they probably haven't had since the last 10 or 12 or 15 years or 20. So, I mean, it, it doesn't help, it doesn't hurt to actually tear your wiper motor out and lube everything up and clean everything up and put it back together again. It isn't really all that hard to do. There's Wait, Randy, Corey. <laughs> there's Did you drive a Mini? There, there's uh, the, the, the back bushing in the motor, which is an oil light bushing, doesn't get much oiling. So it's real convenient to be able to to uh, put a little oil on that. You don't want to be, get fancy with some other fancy greases or whatever, but a good shot of oil on an oil light bushing works pretty good. Especially since it hasn't been looped for the last 20 years. It isn't like we don't use the wi wiper wipers much here. Yeah, I don't even try mine. No but way. still, I, you, you know, it's just, it's really <laughs> hard to, hard to keep your wiper switch on while you're sitting at the light when there isn't enough rain coming down because if it gets stuck then there's no power you know, <laughs> yeah. well you might rev up the motor a little bit to try and get enough uh, voltage out of your alternator or something to maybe move because you got your wiper motor on and all your other electric stuff with your headlights and can't you just grease your windshield? Maybe? <laughs> yeah, you can. You can use that rain yeah. but you'll kick yourself in the ass forever because <laughs> you can't get it back off again. Well, and every time you're driving at night, you run your windshield wipers, and all you see is a bunch of streaks in the yeah. thing. It's kind of like you got a bunch of grease on your windshield, <laughs> and you can't get it off. We used so. to use tobacco. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You, can yeah. Use, you can use a lot of That's things. That's when you used to chew and spit. You can use a lot of things, but I, uh, there's a couple of things that the English have never been particularly noted for. Yeah, you would think it rained so much over there, you'd think it kind of had that We're rinch, 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 wiper rinch, motor. It goes with the heating. And, <laughs> and, heaters, so and good, a good <laughs> heater, water basically, water one that acts even too. defrosted your window. But I, I noticed that the English cars, the minis, have a tendency to defrost the right side first for some reason or another. Yeah. <laughs> so the passenger doesn't complain. Uh, I I always say that <laughs> once the that English simple. once the English actually engineer something, pretty much it stays that way. But there <laughs> has true. been a few updates over the years as far as uh, trying to fix things. But why well, they just don't move very fast. But the later model heaters 
actually have a shaft coming out of both ends of the motor and they have a blower fan on both ends of the motor. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind that's like in my 88 or 89. And I'm not too sure what you're all I can tell you is, is that it does do better than the old ones. Because I can remember my first car was an 850 and it had a one of those little box heaters like Jeremy tries to sell to mm -hmm. you. And it had a little fan on it. And then it had a knob on the, on the dash where you could turn it up or down. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 so that you, yeah. you could, uh, would adjust the RPMs of the, uh, the heater or the blower motor, which was just a fan, not a squirrel cage or whatever. But there would probably be no chance ever in your lifetime that you would ever have it other than on wide open because, <laughs> hey, that's, the that's where we started. One of the best heaters actually that I think that they had was the, although it was a pain in the ass to work around, uh, was the blower hooked to the flitch panel in the front and then piped back to the, back to the box. Mm -hmm. Those actually moved pretty good air basically and they had the right shape and the, uh, the cage and stuff like that to be able to move the air and whatever. So probably out of all of them that really actually worked better. Cooper S, eh, well, you know, probably mediocre. Of course, after driving English cars, I was not disappointed because I just know English cars are that way. You know. So what year are the good heaters on? What year range would you say? Actually, I think that they put those on some of the like 64, 65, 66. Uh, it was the blower motor that was hooked to the inside right flitch panel. Uh, it was the one, the one that was always in the way when you go to try and time your motor and stuff like that and really was not all that convenient. Where some of the uh, newer ones, they have tubing that go around that basically, but they still have their blower motor in the, in the uh, cage and uh, they got two squirrel cages in there and in reality along with a uh, rear window defroster. It, uh, <laughs> and you can actually crack the window at the top, <laughs> which kind of pulls <laughs> some of the moisture out of the car. <laughs> uh, yeah, they actually do probably some of the best that I've ever seen, but before that's the squirrel cage on the outside, which was always just hard to work around when it comes to motor engine parts. So anyhow, that's my heater. Yeah. What about heaters that aren't working? Huh? What heaters that aren't working? Uh, take the uh, heater core out of it, pull the, s pop, uh, the tops off of the thing, take a piece of welding rod, small, uh, take a hammer and flatten it in one direction so that it fits down the tube, poke the tubes out so that they actually can flow some water through it because they're probably long past plugged up. Solder the uh, tanks back onto it again and hook it back into your system and probably work pretty damn good. Or at least it's better than it ever did. It's either that or go get you yourself to new heater core. Yeah. Yeah. Just the same with overheating. Uh, you know, old radiators, uh, I, they don't rod radiators out anymore like they don't take them apart and actually poke the dirt out of them or whatever. So, but it comes right down to it. Uh, you got a little bit of a heating problem you know you're not losing any water. If you're losing water and you have to add water, you got a problem, basically. But if it, if it seems like it's a kind of a heating problem, especially when it comes to the hot day or just when you pulled over the top of the hill and it got a little hot, yeah, I would probably start as suspecting that the radiator isn't as working as good as it could. And probably should be replaced a little more often than sometimes they get replaced. Because you just get crud in them. I have a question. Which years do you push in on the knob to get heat? That could be your problem. Well, <laughs> what I finally what I finally surmounted to is, is there isn't such a thing as a good heater control valve. No. 
and that really if you want control of your heater you put a well there for a while I was putting those sprite faucet type things so you can shut it off in the summertime mm -hmm. and turn it back on again more minor these these days I don't you know I, I, I don't basically I like it at least hooked up to the motor solid so that you don't have leaks that's your first that's your very first problem in a motor uh, overheating it or something like that is losing the water so you got to retain water no matter what if you're if you can keep water in it you're not overheating it as much as you might think well just removing the valve and just doing a bypass no. yeah like I say yeah. just doing a bypass yeah, so that you're that. assured okay. the other <coughs> the other thing is the uh, lower radiator control or I mean the old the lower radiator hose if, I mean, that's been a problem forever. And you never, you never want to go someplace where you actually have to change that. If you're on the highway and you got a lower radiator hose problem, <laughs> well, you, you, you might have a problem if you haven't done something to fix it so that you actually can uh, uh, do it on the road. Uh, one of the first things, one of the first things that is, um, Mandatory for a Mark One, Mark Two with the heater shrouds. But you got to remove the heater shroud out of there because the later models they removed it and didn't have any problems. Now I hate to bash a uh, bash a uh, a good car up, and sometimes I'll even put up with them. But you won't want to put up with them out in the highway someplace uh, uh, trying to replace a lower radiator hose. If you want to replace that lower radiator hose, get one of those silicon. There is, there is, there is. I think the answer for it is non-rotting hose like that. These new silicon hoses they have, because in reality, without the bypass hose in your head, which you don't really need, which is horrible. Uh, if you change. have those, if you have those silicon hoses in there, you can use anything you want for cooling. Uh, I had a little oil leak once going into the oil, so I emptied all the water out. And it was a brand new motor, so. Basically, I just put motor oil in the radiator because that's all that was happening anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I wasn't ready to take it was back that, out again. Was that ten weight oil? Or but I, uh, <laughs> well, you know, I just used the same oil I used in the motor or whatever. So, <laughs> but but it, right. it, it worked for about a year until actually the <laughs> the rubber hose blew out at the at the coupling for the uh, the heater, hmm. and that's where they've always been weak. But the, these. Uh, silicon hoses, I expect uh, probably longer life with more adverse conditions. Uh, we've been told about coolant and what you do with coolant or whatever. Uh, coolant is partly responsible for keeping your motor from rusting inside because it has an, an anti-rust inhibitor. Uh, most people blend it 50-50 with the, with the coolant and water. That gives you maximum pr protection. Some places down there around minus 55 degrees, which I don't know. I, I've never seen any of that around here. <laughs> but if you have, if you if you were to run straight antifreeze, it only protects you down to about 35 degrees, minus 35 degrees, which is more than adequate for around here. And part of the deal is keeping the keeping the coolant in your motor but you'll you'll never have any you'll never have a, any rotten anything in your motor if you're running straight antifreeze mm. you can always add some water to it if you have a desperation because it was overheated or that the fact that you've used a cheap thermostat you can't you can't pay 8.95 or 12.95 for the thermostat because they want to sell you a Five dollar and ninety five cent one. And say no, 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 no. I want to buy the best one you got because thermostats, if they don't work, cause you a lot of problems. I mean, right up. Uh, we've been told that one meeting or another that they like to use the paper gaskets, the new new gaskets of the uh, thermostat housings and stuff because they don't like the cork ones. Yeah. Well. The problem with those is they wick, and they wick fluid th 
through to your studs that hold the thermostat together and stuff. When you go to pull it apart, you can't do that, basically. Then in reality, probably the only other option you have is the cork ones, which have always worked just fine. They just kind of ooze out of the hole. Or what I do these days is I use this gasket maker that I get from Loctite, which is Loctite 518. And I just put a little of that on there and I smear the thing down and it's sealed. And then I don't even use a gasket. In fact, there's the whole motor. I've got down to the point where I use a primary gasket uh, and a head gasket. No fan gasket? No, no, I seal it all together with 518 and I've had far, le far less leaks. The other thing that you do is you gain a little uh, tightness on your, on your uh, primary gear to your idler gear. So you don't have quite so much slack and it quiets them down quite a bit, but you can always feel that slack in there basically. You know, you know that you're not going to run your gears out of there. You got to have a little lash in your gears because they can't run tight. But it's like the English forgot that they were going to put the gasket in there. So when they did the engineering for it, they clearance it all for without the gasket in there because it seems to be, I think, a lot better. Unless, of course, you've taken some metal off the bottom of your block or something and you got to use the gaskets for spacers. <laughs>